like if you've got the name tag on you're basically a walking billboard and people are going to come up to you and those are easy conversations what, do you, what i don't understand what the problem is so um, i'm a veteran and i have and down here in south florida we have a, a veterans network and basically like plumbers, electricians, general contractors, all of this. And I'm trying to figure out how I can leverage that with what I do now, which was obviously, you know, other than my direct, direct to my clients, but in my funnel too, you know, I provide value because I'm providing veterans, you know, they still work with the same work ethic, same discipline, integrity as they did before. They just redirected their passions to a new profession. And uh, I, I believe that can provide value as well. So how, how do you think I can use that to, to help with what I'm doing? So as far as like taking advantage of the fact that you have a connection with other contractors and vendors and things like that, you mean? Yep, that are all, that are all, you know, that we meet, we meet monthly. We also have a website. We have all our, 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 all our vendors listed. I think things like that, and you guys feel free to chime in, but like on things like that, I would be careful with mass marketing that because you know, yeah, they're, you know, they're your fellow veterans, right? Which thank yeah. you for your service, but they're fellow veterans. Okay. And like they're, it's a brotherhood and like you trust them with your life, you know, and stuff. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, that's not to say that and you know, like 99% of them I'm sure are great, but what happens that one time that you referred them to a client and some really bad stuff happened? Right, that's the thing that happens in my mind, and it's happened to me before. I've referred contractors out, yeah. great contractors, nothing but I've had nothing but great results. But then that one time, it was a mess, and now the now the now the client is pissed at me, and I got to where I just don't refer uh, vendors anymore. You know, very few. Like I'll do the inspector, you know, I'll do the lender. Um, but as far as contractors, that's tough for me to, so I try to tread lightly there. I think I would use it in my back pocket just to provide more value because if you don't have that up front, but then on the back end, they need a plumber and you just pull one out of your pocket, they're gonna be like, wow, this dude is really helping us here. You know what I mean? So I think use it, I think keep it in your pocket and use it when you need to, you know, to make clients feel like they're VIP. So Rick, uh, this is gonna be like completely different from like what everybody else has been asking. I'm actually situated in Canada and I came across your YouTube channel just like looking at like sales strategies and things. I'm a mortgage broker in uh, Canada and I'm very new. And uh, I just wanted to get a little bit of your advice. I watched your, your video on uh, how new lenders can start cold calling realtors and I've tried your strategy and it's all honestly been working really well for me. Mm. Uh, the one thing that I am having trouble with is the follow-up. So after I do have the initial conversation where I, I ask them like, hey, is there anything in the world I can do for you? It's your classic phrase. Everybody loves it. Uh, I, I just don't know after, even after I pass all the objections and they say, hey, you know what? I would like to work with you. They book a meeting. You know, we go over everything. I just don't know how to go back to them asking for business, and that's the one thing I'm having a lot. Of. What what uh what are you having a meeting with them about? So uh, I basically uh, when I have a meeting with them, I start to get to know their business a little bit more. Um, ask them about their experience as a realtor, and then mm. I have a five minute presentation because I don't want to bore them with the same things they hear a thousand times. Where I just talk about. Yeah. exactly what the holes are in the industry which are speed communication and the ability to get results so yeah a lot of times mortgage workers are like very slow or they don't communicate enough or they yeah. just can't get them. and i just go into that and they say you know what i appreciate that where did you learn this i tell them i just talked to a lot of realtors who were having problems and these were the problems that kept coming up again and again and again and these are this is how i sort of solve those problems mm -hmm. it's just that i don't know how to go back to them after that and be like hey listen like um, can I help any of your clients? I got you, man. Um, I think I would kind of like, uh, I, I don't know, man, like I'm not all, I'm not into like the list meet and talk about realtors and give me a five minute presentation and stuff. Like, here's what I want. I want to see what you can do with the client. 
I want to see if you give them the customer service they need. I want to see if you get the deal done. I want to see how your communication is between me, my client, the title company, and everybody involved to get this thing done really smooth and that my clients are happy as can be about your services, right? And so that's what you need to sell them on. Don't don't do this horse and pony show about what they're looking for in a in a mortgage broker and give them a five minute presentation. You go straight for the for the gusto here and you tell them, listen, I'm going to take the best care of your clients. I'm going to get the deal done very smoothly. I don't know if you if you're you know because a lot of these people are very loyal to their lenders. So what you're looking for is somebody that's caught in a deal that they're that they're having seats. When people switch lenders, it's because they had a problem with the last lender. And what you're trying to do is find that perfect timing of somebody that's having pro problems and looking for somebody different to kind of because once they find the one that 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 does the best job, they're gonna they're not going to move. So that's the thing. If you if you notice, agents are very loyal to their mortgage brokers that they've done business with for a while because they know how they operate and it's too risky to take a client and try out another mortgage broker on a deal where you're gonna make fifteen thousand dollars but you're, you're, you're risking that on this mortgage broker that may or may not do a good job but you know this other guy's gonna do a good job right so it's hard to switch when you got a good one so what you're trying to do is trying to is trying to find the new agents that are still looking for that good one right so go after new agents that's a good pool for you to, to go after and also you know call the agents and ask them how it's going with their current lender if you're thinking about you know trying out another lender right just be straight up about it and say listen give me a shot you know say listen i'm going to be the lender that you stick with forever because i'm going to give i'm going to give you and your client and the title company such good service that you're not you're you're going to be you know you're you're going to um, you're never going to use anybody else ever again once you use me. So just give me a shot. Let me prove it to you. And then that'll be that. All you need, bro, is a good 10 agents sending you business. 10, 15 agents, you know, producing agents sending you business. And you'll be, you'll be gold. Like I see you're an established agent. You close a bunch of deals. Do you have a lender that you work with normally? Okay, you do. Cool. Um, how are they doing for you? Like, are you looking to make a change or trying to balance out? You know, just understand their mindset behind the fact that once they get a good lender, they're not going to use another lender. So what you're trying to do is trying to ask the questions to dig into, um, do they have, is that lender the one that they feel is the one? It's like getting married. Like, is, is that lender the one? Right? And if it is the one, say, great, congrats on that. Don't try to you know, do anything at that point. Say congrats on that. I'm gonna put you in my, you know, um, in my database. I'll send you stuff. If you ever wanna try out a different lender, I'm here, right? And then move on. Cause you're looking for the people that are ready to move, try a different lender or a new agent that's trying lenders to see which one, you know, you gotta understand the, the mindset behind it, right? So just ask the questions you need to, to find out if you could possibly, it's the same thing with the agents when we're talking to prospects. You know, when I'm, when I'm saying, hey, is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? I'm just the same thing. I'm trying to find out if they found the one yet. And if not, then here I am. I'd love to possibly take a shot at being the one for you. You know, your agent for life. Like if you've got the name tag on, you're basically a walking billboard and people are going to come up to you and those are easy conversations. What, do you, what I don't understand where the problem is. I guess because of, you know what, it just happened the other day and I felt after I left the store, I'm like, I think that lady like really was looking for an agent. And I just but, yeah, I mean, if they it, and walked out the door, I would say that if they walk up to an agent and start asking you real estate questions, and chances are they're looking for an agent. Okay. Well, what you want, what you want to do is just ask them. Say, yeah, I'm in real estate. Here's answers to your question. What are you looking to do, or how can I help you? Right? And then based yeah. on how you okay. can help them, oh, you're looking to do that. Well, why are you looking to do that for? Okay, cool. Well, let's, are you working with somebody already? Well, let's work together. What's your information? Bam, take it down to your phone, email, phone number, information. Okay, cool. Well, listen, you want to get together later? You want to get there tomorrow? We'll come look at the house or I'll email you some properties. I'll call you later. I don't know what you're going to say from there. Depends on what the situation is, but those are easy conversations to have when they're coming up to you. I think, I think what's tough is you know when you're trying when you're trying to talk to people about real estate and you go up to them that if people are coming up to you that that should be easy conversations